Yeah, thanks for the very nice introduction. I'm Robert from the part-time scientist, and I would be really happy if transporting moon rovers would be as easy as this today. So um, I brought a very big challenge for you today, which I want to talk about. So, and also I want to tell you about well, who the part-times are actually are. So let's get started. The big problem for today that I brought to you, and that's a very, I tried to make it a very, very large one. The big problem is actually that this picture that you already saw today is, was taken 46 years, one month, 13 days ago, as of this day today. So why is this actually a problem? Because it shows you that, you know, we haven't had another picture like these. And the key issue here is that we will not be able to take one like these again anytime in the future. And of course, you know, it's, it's like a government um, mission only. So that what I'm conclusion that I want to present you with today is that I believe space is broken. So what do I mean with space is broken? So space exploration in itself has been really, really successful, and we've been achieving a lot of things with the way we did it in the past with uh, governmental activities. But if you're sitting here in the audience, and you know we've been inspired by a lot of the technology that you saw today, like nanoscale 3D printing, which is totally awesome, and you have this great innovative idea to you know, build a business which bases on technology on Mars, or you want to put a webcam on the moon, and you have to, you know, that's the kind of business idea that you have, and you're looking for investors, then I have bad news for you. Because right now, there is not an economy in place for you to be able to put your idea through. So that's of the key issue that I want to point out to you. So space exploration, while we're doing it for fundamental research, which is hugely, really, really important, um, there is not a way to get privately involved. And that is what we want to change. So, what is actually the solution? You know, kind of saying that space is broken, so how could you solve this problem? And I think the solution is quite simple. You just have to put a 3D printer on the moon. So, I think, you know, everybody likes 3D printers, they're quite innovative. Uh, but the point is, what do I want to say with putting a 3D printer on the moon? What I want to point out to you is that the main challenge when it comes to space exploration is actually um, not a competitor, but it's actually the fundamental laws of physics. So we have a person, like somebody who's like on the leading edge of private space exploration, which is Elon Musk. He's the founder of the company called SpaceX. He's also the founder of the company uh, Tesla. So, and he did some great things, and he's you know, pushing space exploration, trying to make it cheaper with launches like this, as you can see the rocket over there, which is the Falcon rocket. And, you know, it has a pretty heavy price tag, but compared to what we had in the past, it's quite good. But still, what Elon Musk is doing here is trying to um, win an optimization game. So he, he's fighting the laws of physics there. He's building chemical-based rockets, which have to overcome the gravity of Earth to get into space. And for this, he needs an amount of energy. This energy that he requires translates into rocket fuel, and rocket fuel, again, translates into money. So you have this kind of challenge that you really cannot beat a certain price market. So that, that's kind of the key issue here. So how could a 3D printer actually help you solve this problem? So our idea of what we try to do is putting a 3D printer on the moon would actually prove that it's possible to manufacture parts on another celestial body just using the resources over there. So the key in here is called in situ utilization, using the resources which are already in place. So you have on the moon, you have the lunar regolith, which is kind of the lunar dust, the gray stuff that everybody knows. And if you manage to use this material, and if you use just the light that comes from the sun to, for example, what we want to do, manufacture a small metal gear, then you can actually prove that it's possible to produce the parts right there on the moon. So this way, you do, you do not break the laws of physics, and you don't have to invent a miracle engine. By the way, if somebody invents a miracle engine, please let me know. But you can actually cheat the laws of physics here, so that you make the moon the next stepping stone to reach out into space. So, but before I tell you about, like, actually we want to put a 3D printer on the moon, I want to shortly introduce who we actually are. So. Um, I got a short video with me, which tells you who the part-time scientists are, and then I will show you a little bit of the stuff that we do. The moon, our closest neighbor in the solar system, and yet it has always seemed distant and unreachable until now. Now, a private team of engineers is working to change that forever. 
They come from different backgrounds, countries, and fields of expertise. But what unites them is true pioneering spirit and the will to try the impossible. Who are these guys? They are the part-time scientists, and they are full-time crazy. Audi engineers are supporting them to build and test the Audi Lunar Quattro to make it ready for the moon's challenges in the context of the Google Lunar X Prize. Together, we will take collaboration and teamwork further and reach for the stars. Wherever this mission may take us, together we are following the true meaning of Horsprung Druck Technik. Join the part-time scientists on their mission, the mission to the moon. Thank you. So there is, of course, a bit of marketing in here, but it's the good kind. <laughs> now, if, everybody, if every company out there who would, would do marketing like this, funding innovative projects, then I would be totally happy, you know? So I told you that I will tell you a little bit of what we actually do. So what we've, we've been doing this for the past seven years, and for over five years, totally in our free time. That's why we call it the part-time scientists. So, and what we've managed to develop over there is what you can see here, that's what we call our payload. So that's what we put onto the top of our rocket, an Indian-based one, which is a satellite launch vehicle, totally not intended for sending something to the moon. So, and this is the, the payload itself. That's the landing module attached with two rovers attached to it. So the two rovers itself, they have something that we call drop containers, which is the, the, the space where we deploy scientific payloads, technology that we want to put to test on the moon. So, and... Yeah, that, that's basically what you need to get to the moon. So this package, as I said, it's also called payload, will be launched to a specific Earth orbit, and from there on it will make its uh, rotations and burns to go over to the low moon orbit. And as the name landing module suggests, the purpose of this vehicle is, of course, also enter, to enter the descent stage and touch down softly, hopefully, on the moon and deploy these two lunar rovers. So the key here for us is actually doing the technology and um, the t experiments onto this rovers itself. So what we did over the past years is trying to use as much of the technology which has never been used in space before, which at most of the times comes right out of the laboratories, which has been developed for many of the cancelled missions for space. There's a large number of missions that never happened, you know, where projects got funded, technology was developed, but then funding was cut again. So um, we were happy to uh, get access and tap into this potential and so we're using a lot of things, um, for example, like 3D printed aluminum to uh, get better parts out of to the system, you know, having more light wave structures. And yeah, that's just what, what's what we've been doing. So uh, we've been, uh, in 2014, we've been selected by the Google X Prize team um, to participate in a milestone prize challenge. So um, they have been looking for teams trying to win their challenge, which are significantly technologically advanced. So we've been working with a panel of uh, space experts. I always like to call them space cowboys because they're really awesome guys from NASA and ESA who had actually every one of those has a spacecraft somewhere in space right now already, which is kind of cool, you know, working with these guys. So we've been working for 40 months with these guys, showing them all the technology and putting our things, like the rover like this one over here, to all of the tests, like radiation, thermal, vacuum, vibration. And I'm really happy to tell you that this January, We've been awarded two of the Milestone Prize Awards. So, <laughs> okay, so being asked for the bigger picture here. So if, like, let's assume that everything that we want to turns out as we would like to. So um, that we are able to put something onto the moon and that there's actually an economical infrastructure in place, which, you know, kind of with the internet, inspires people to just go out there and do something, innovate startups into the space industry, what would be the perspective for the next 10 to 20 years? And I think the simple answer here is simply to look back. Because if you would have asked somebody in the 70s what he thinks for the future of space exploration, and he would have told you that he thinks that in 10 years he will be you know, like making a holiday trip to the moon, working on Mars, you know, having a space station where he can travel to, it's all of this visionary aspect that we totally lost over time and that we need to regain because we need to give the people access to it. And we need to show the people actually that it's not just the super brains at NASA, but they actually can do it themselves. 
That's one of the key messages that we want to send with this mission, and also I want to personally send that if we are successful and our mission is set to be launched on the second quarter of 2017, and if it's successful to land this rover on the moon, then achieve something not just on a technological scale, but also I've proven that me as a person who's totally non-qualified to do any of this is actually capable of sending something to the moon. What does this mean for you? If I'm unqualified and I'm sending something to the moon, what's your excuse to not do this? So, and I brought you a challenge of it. The challenge that I have for you today is the one that I had for the past five years, but don't be intimidated, you can do it. The question is, how can we achieve for space exploration what we've achieved for the internet since the 90s?